We still have no idea what happened the night of that accident. My name is Brandon Alexander, and this is the unknown story of my skateboarding accident that led to a traumatic brain injury and seven surgeries over the past three years. We'll start back at the very beginning on October 11th, 2019. I normally wear my helmet when I'm riding, but I don't know why I didn't this time. It was just a beautiful day outside and I guess I didn't even think about it. I was cleaning and um, the kids and I were just like hanging out. I just looked to track you. You didn't move and, and I zoomed in. I was like, where is he? And I tracked you to New York Presbyterian Hospital. I tried to call you immediately and you didn't answer. So I called the hospital and I was like, hi, I'm looking for my son, Brandon. He's about 5'10". He has on a plaid shirt, jeans, but he was on a skateboard. And they said, we have a John Doe that meets that description. I get him the cab and he takes me to the hospital it seemed like an eternity and then I get there they show me where you were laying and you were literally like flopping around on the bed like a flounder and I was like oh my god why are we letting him do this like what is going on and they're like oh and I was like no he does not have a Brandon doesn't remember what caused his traumatic brain injury and then all of a sudden you just sat up and you looked at me like straight in the face. Blood started dripping down your ear. Instantly, everyone just jumped into action. After they did the first CAT scan, he told me that you had a subdural hematoma and that your brain was bleeding at a rapid rate and that they needed to transfer you to another hospital, Whale Cornell. Well, then he came back and he said, we can't wait, we cannot transfer him. I don't think he'll survive the 20 minute ambulance ride. I'm gonna do the surgery here. I'm preparing my colleagues uptown for his arrival and right out of surgery, he's going straight in an ambulance and going uptown. We didn't know what to expect at that point other than the fact that we just held strong to our faith and knew that you were gonna be okay. After a successful surgery, Brandon was transferred to another hospital for a long recovery process. So I remained in a medically induced coma for about three days after the accident. after having the intubation tube removed. I woke up very groggy, very not knowing what was going on at all. They ended up needing to restrain my arms down because I kept ripping IVs out and they were worried I was gonna rip the tube out of my brain that was allowing it to drain fluid. I want this thing off my face. I know you did, but listen. Like, take it off now. Look at me. Shortly after that, I had this helmet made for me, which I then tricked out myself. That I would ultimately have to wear every single time I stood up because I had no skull protecting my brain. Four days following that, I took my first steps to the bathroom. With some help, of course, I was then transported to NYU Langone Rusk Rehabilitation Center, which specializes for traumatic brain injury patients. I was in rehab for about 12 days. Yeah only 12 days. And during rehab, I went through occupational therapy, physical therapy, regular therapy, and most importantly, speech therapy. After a few weeks of therapy, he was ready for surgery to replace the missing segment of his skull. Right before the surgery, the doctor walked in and said, hey Brandon, by the way, there's gonna be no plastic surgeon and we're not gonna record this. Which I had filled out a bunch of paperwork saying that they can record it and that I want them to record the surgery for me to have. And this was told to me as I was going under, like the mask was on my face and I, I was going under. After the surgery, I had to wait five hours for a hospital room. I stayed in the recovery area for five hours. I vomited four times after brain surgery because they didn't bring me nausea medicine after requesting it multiple times. After I had fully recovered from that surgery, I couldn't look at myself in the mirror because I had this giant lump of muscle that should have been stretched out and put onto the new skull, but it wasn't because there was no plastic surgeon in the surgery in December. So in January of 2021, I went and scheduled an appointment with a plastic surgeon to see what we could do about the bump. And that's when we did a 3D CT scan and actually could see where in my skull was missing. So this is what the side of a normal skull looks like. This is the side with the implant and you can see the space between the skull and the implant. That's not supposed to be there. That's supposed to be flush. As we move to the back, you'll see something that looks almost like a dent. And it actually is one. See, that spot actually stops about right here. And that space, there's nothing there. So it's like a soft spot on a baby. I spoke to my plastic surgeon about it and he was blown away. Number one, a plastic surgeon is supposed to lead the bone flap repair that is on the outside of the skull. He gave me three options. Option number one was just leave it as it is. Option number two was to leave the existing skull in there from the first cranioplasty and just stretch the muscle back out and try to secure it to that existing implant. And then option three, which is the one I ended up going with was just completely redoing the entire thing. Taking out the old skull implant and replacing it with a polyether ether ketone peak implant made by Stryker. And obviously I wanted to avoid any future surgeries. So I of course went with the replace the entire thing and do it right. It was kind of cool though. My new skull has my name engraved on it as well as a serial number. So then on March 19th, 2021, I had the entire left side of my skull removed and replaced again. This is the second time he's needed that part of his skull replacing. And then on the 26th, I left the hospital to go home and it was great. Like every Everything was 
super, super good. After about two months of recovery, I decided to go on a trip to Arizona to spend time with my father figure, Amir, and really find my emotional independence again. Because I'd been really reliant on everyone else around me for the two years leading up to that moment. I thought everything was gonna be good from then on. The the bump was healing up nicely, the, the swelling had been down, it was really good, until it wasn't. Then on the 4th of July in 2021, I woke up and my nose was bleeding. And so I jumped out of bed. As I'm walking to the bathroom, I collapsed. Fell straight back and hit my head on the hardwood floor. My mom heard my head and hit the ground. I remember hearing her screaming. Immediately I stood up and I felt the worst pain of headaches and just awfulness. I looked in the mirror and I saw fluid forming along the left side of my skull. The same place that had just been operated on three months prior. So when I got to the hospital, they assessed me and they told me that I had a mild concussion on top of my already injured brain, which exacerbates any concussion. And then they gave me pain meds and they told me if it gets any worse to contact my doctor. That night in doing my own research, I did some reading about a cerebral spinal fluid leak. I must have torn open a hole in my dura, which is the meningeal artery that surrounds your brain that allows the cerebral spinal fluid to get into my skull under my skin which causes a whole slew of problems, including midline shifts. The same reason why I had to have surgery the first time. I went to the hospital because the fluid had gotten so bad that I really, really couldn't bear it anymore. And it was so much pressure in my head. It literally felt like my head was gonna explode. So at the hospital, they then tapped me and then they wrapped my head. And I would continue being like that for the next week until August 5th, where I really couldn't stand the headaches anymore. Later that day, they would have me go in for surgery where they would place a lower lumbar peritoneal shunt from the base of my spinal cord redirecting the spinal fluid to my abdomen where it's automatically absorbed by our body. This surgery really took a toll on Brandon's life. The recovery from the shunt surgery was really hard because it was like a very sudden thing. I all of a sudden had to just stop doing what I was doing. I had to stop living life the way I wanted to and like all of my plans that I had made had to be canceled and like totally redirected. And then on August 20th, 2021 was my 21st birthday, which I wasn't really able to celebrate the normal way an American celebrates their 21st birthday because of the amount of pain medicine I was on. Something must have happened. The next morning after waking up after my birthday, I had fluid in my head again and there was no amount of opioids or any painkiller that could have helped fix that. It was just terrible. I went back to the hospital. I went in for surgery for the second time that month. This surgery was just basically a revision of the previously installed lower lumbar peritoneal shunt. After the surgery, nothing really changed. It was like kind of, I hadn't had surgery. I'm at the doctor right now. We're going to tap it and suck the fluid out and then we're going to wrap it and hopefully that'll start the fluid to drain down into the shunt. A few days after arriving home, I called my doctor and I was like, hey, it's back and it didn't really go anywhere, but it's back and it's collecting again. So we're gonna have to try a different approach at this. We're gonna do what's called a subgaleal shunt, which basically attaches a, a tube and a valve right here on the outside of my skull, but under my skin, and then a valve right here. The tube runs down my body into my abdomen. And you actually probably can see that right here moving around. That surgery took place on September 7th, 2021. So I had three surgeries in a span of a month, which obviously wasn't fun. However, that does bring us to here. I live with my girlfriend now in Queens and my entire family has moved back to Florida and I'm kind of just vibing here in New York City. I just want to say like this whole process has been grueling, but also it's enlightened me to so many different things about my life that I, I took for granted every single day, like my health and my well-being, but also doing what you love every single day because you might not get tomorrow and like this could be it. What are you doing today that you don't want to be doing or that isn't pushing you towards the goals you really have and the dreams you have? And if you're not doing that, start doing it. And I guarantee you'll live a much better life. Brandon has been through so much over the past few years and we wish him the best going forward. In the comments, people were amazed by Brandon's recovery with one saying, after 20 years as a paramedic, I can tell you this is a miracle. Most do not recover like this. God's blessing for a full and wonderful life. While others are praising his mum for her quick response, saying, your mum saved your life. She is incredible. From her checking your location, knowing something wasn't right, to telling hospital staff you aren't overdosing, but having a traumatic head injury. Your prayers were heard. Amazing. As always, thank you for watching Happiest. If you like this video, then be sure to follow our Instagram and TikTok pages for more videos like this. And if you have any of your own videos you'd like to share, be sure to send them in.